Hey, it's Atlas Gaming, just making a really quick video, mainly for Darth, but also for anybody else that wants to find the best way to do raw material gathering. So, first thing we're doing is we're going to a trader. We're going to empty out or clean out as much of our high-level materials as possible. So you can see here that I'm trading down. So going from the uh, level four and then filling up levels one, level two, and level three materials horizontally. I'm going to do that with every single one of the raw materials. Make sure that whatever can be pushed to the left is pushed to the left. So you want to be as full up as possible on levels one, two, and three and have as little as possible in level four. Now, if this is the first time you're going out for raw materials, you might have a whole bunch of zeros. Don't worry about that. The key thing here is that you don't want to have a situation where you have something in the fourth column, but you're low on materials in columns one, two, or three. Now, when you trade down like this, you always want to make sure you're going horizontally. You can go diagonally or vertically trading a material for one up and one over or just one up straight. The problem is you have a very bad exchange rate of the material traders. You're going to, uh, I believe the exchange rate is something like um, 16 to 1 or something like that for going up. Uh, it's, a, it's a really bad rate. Essentially, you're going to have to fill up the thing that you're using to trade from uh, like eight times just to convert it to a single of another vertical type of material. So what we're going to do is actually get all the materials so I don't need to trade diagonally. I don't need to trade vertically. I'm just trading horizontally. And as you can see, I'm almost done filling up all the lower level materials by using the fourth column of each of the rolls of materials. Um, as soon as I do that, uh, we'll go ahead and talk briefly about what you want to bring with you. And then after that, uh, we'll, I'll go through and show the, uh, the locations of every system for raw materials. Uh, there are more than one system. There's certainly plenty of different systems that you can gather raw materials from. However, what I've found over the last several years, uh, really about five years of playing this game, that the locations I'm going to share have the highest concentrations of each of the single material per planet, which means you should be able to fill up very quickly. And uh, in fact, um, I'll show you as we get going that I basically fill up one of the raw materials, the first one that I fly to with no specific location, just randomly picking a place on the planet, and I completely fill it up to full in less than 20 minutes. I think it's actually closer to about 17 minutes, and it is completely filled. So what do you want to bring with you? Well, uh, you have to bring a remote release flak launcher. You can just bring one, but I recommend bringing several. I'm going to bring three in this case. You also need limpets. So make sure you have a limpet controller of at least level five and at least grade B. So either a 5A or a 5B. Now here are the locations. You can pause the video if you want to check what each of the locations for different types of uh, materials are. Um, I'm going to be uh, slowly scrolling through here so you can see what all of them are. But essentially, we're going to gather one type of material per planet and then until it's full and then move on to a different planet. Um, just a quick reminder on the limpets. You, you can't use size 3 limpet controllers. It has to be a size 5 or a size 7. And it has to be either a grade A or a grade B because we're going to be over one kilometer above the target. So we need limpets that have a range, a collection range of at least 1500 meters, which would be in 5A. 5B, I believe is 1800. And then of course, all the level seven ones are even longer than that. But if you, uh, if you think you're gonna bring a, a level three controller or universal size three controller, those are not gonna work. 
anyway, um, hopefully you've seen the locations by this point. I've scrolled through them several times. Now I'm going to show you how far away from the bubble they are. Uh, I think it comes out to about 1,700 or 1,800 light years. So just a little under 2,000 light years. It's, um, it's depending on the number of jumps of your ship. It could be three and a half or let's say four jumps in a carrier. Uh, or maybe 24 to 30 jumps in a high light year range ship. Um, certainly not something that is crazy long distance, but it is something you're going to want to plan for. So let me just uh, select a few others because they're not all together. They are spread out a little bit, but this gives you a good idea of kind of where you're going to be going for each. There are North Argoids around any of these locations. They're all safe, uh, at least again, as of right now, end of 2024. Things could change in the future. But uh, right now, these are the easiest locations to maximize getting your materials from. So right now, we're just going to jump out to one of these locations. Uh, and I, from that point on, I'm not going to uh, have any more cuts. It'll be a continuous video. So we've flown out to HIP. 36601. We're going to start on planet C1 or moon C1, I guess. And um, I'm just going to plot my way out there. Now, I, uh, I've i had this account for about, I guess, about two months now. So this is still a very young account, but I have gone and done some of the uh, Guardian sites. I've actually killed some Thargoids with it. And I've done trade enough to actually buy a carrier. Um, so it is a very young account, but it is an account that does own a carrier. So I took the carrier out here. You don't have to. You can uh, certainly fly out here directly in the ship you're going to be using. I recommend that you don't bring a DBX um, simply because it has a small number of limpets that it holds. Um, you could put up to three of the... Uh, the guns on there, but you're still going to be limited to the number of limpets that you're going to bring along with you. And it's just a little easier when you don't have to worry about the limpets. So I'm, uh, since I brought a carrier, I have a full choice of ships and I just slap the guns onto a, um, uh, a Python. So it is my normal mining Python. I just took some of the mining lasers off. That already has a limpet controller, and it's got plenty of cargo space for limpets. Uh, the materials themselves, as I'm sure you're aware, don't take up any cargo room, so you don't have to worry about having cargo for them. But you do need enough cargo room for limpets, because uh, obviously they're the ones that are going to be doing most of the work. So you never have to get out of your ship and jump into a, a vehicle, drive around, shoot one shard at a time or one tree at a time no 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 no. that's that's old school that's what we used to do now we have a much faster easier better way a way where you can frankly be watching netflix or doing something else while you're collecting the materials now you can see since i've already been to this planet and i've already uh mapped it you can see that i have a uh a green map. I'm going to go through and just pretend that I haven't been here. I'm going to launch a couple of probes and then I'm going to shard, switch over to crystal and shards. Now it would be exactly the same process if you're looking at the <clears throat> the trees, the brain trees. Instead of crystal and shards, you just switch it to brain trees. But the process of collection is exactly the same. There's literally no difference there. <clears throat> so we just pick an area that um, that has a decent amount of blue cruise in there i can't remember if i was going too fast this time or not um hopefully i wasn't going too fast unfortunately occasionally i will come in too fast and it'll actually take me out and then i have to go through the whole loop again and wait until the uh the drive is cooled off and then get going but it appears 
uh, yeah, so this was one of the times that I managed to actually glide in at a decent speed. So we're just picking a large blue area. Um, you will hear misinformation that people tell you about go here, but not there. There, there is no difference in the density that is shown on this map. This is not a heat map. The colored gradations that you see, some are darker, some are lighter. It, they're all variants of blue. The only difference is the darker areas are more hilly. The lighter areas are not as hilly. That's it. That's literally the only thing that, that has a color difference. You can also see that it's not even all that big a difference. So the areas that were a little darker are barely hilly, and the areas that are a little lighter are still a little bumpy. They're not completely flat. And then, of course, um, the rims of all the craters. Um, oh, and this is where I realized I forgot to bring limpets. Okay, don't forget limpets. I was an idiot for forgetting them. Luckily, I just downgraded all my materials, so I can just burn some of those materials up and craft limpets because I'm lazy. What I should do is just fly back to the carrier, pick up a bunch of limpets. And incidentally, if you flew here without a carrier, there are usually about 15 or 20 carriers here, most of whom will sell you limpets. So even if you were as dumb as me here and flew in and didn't bring limpets, don't worry about it. You'll be able to buy some on one of the carriers in this system. There are no stations here, but there are always, always, always carriers that are here. Um, so I just made some limpets, which hopefully you know that you can make limpets if, if you really need to. It's not super efficient. It does use some resources, but if you're lazy like me and you really need to do it, it's totally possible to just fly out with no limpets and actually craft the limpets while you are looking for resources here. So all I'm doing is I'm flying and I'm looking for groups of shard trees. Um, it would be the same with brain trees. What you're looking for is more than just one or two of them next to each other. Preferably you have like a clump of five, six, seven, or 10 or more. Basically the more together, the better, because that means you're going to have to use less ammunition. Um, so I'm still looking around. Uh, the limpets should be manufactured by now, so they're all ready to be launched. And there we go. So I picked a group, I launched the shards, or not the shards, the, uh, the flat gun. And the way that works, so you'll figure it out once you install it, if you've never shot it. And it is technically a thar anti thargoid weapon, so that's where you're going to find it. Is you hold the button down after you launch it, and then when you release the button, it triggers an explosion. So that single shot obviously worked because I released the limpet, and it's going down there. It's actually going down to pick up some material. Uh, so height-wise, you can see that I'm right now at about 815, so around 900 meters. The ideal distance is actually just around or just over one kilometer. So I'm a little bit too close right now. And I know that just from experience, but also one of my limpets is going to die because uh, the distance has to be a kilometer or more because the limpets will bounce into obstructions if those obstructions are within the render range. The render range is how far the distance is that the game is going to draw something when it's far away from you. And that range, I think, is around one kilometer, give or take. Now, I think if you're playing at low resolution or something other than ultra settings, that range may actually be smaller. And maybe some other people have figured out what those numbers are. I usually play on the 4K screen with ultra settings for everything. Okay, you can see I lost that limpet. So... This is where I think I figured out, oh, I'm still too close. So I started backing up. So I'm over 1,000 meters, over one kilometer. And then I'm going to launch a couple of more limpets when I know that this limpet isn't going to die. And I, I kind of do that initially where I don't just dump everything all at once for this exact reason. I only go and do this maybe once every four months, maybe so maybe three, four times a year. So there's always something I forget, like bringing limpets with me. 
So that's, I obviously forgot bringing limpets with me this time. <clears throat> so uh, luckily I was able to make some. And then I also was too close. That cost me a few limpet deaths. But now I've reminded myself that, oh yeah, I should be at least a kilometer or maybe even a little bit higher up. And what I like to do is actually have my limpets, at least one of them, be selected. And the reason for that is whatever is selected, whatever is targeted, it's going to show me how far away that individual thing, not just what is my height above ground. So you can see one of my limpets is not moving. The other one's just bringing back the last bit collected. <clears throat> so I'm just going to uh, start flying and looking for the next target. Oh, there's some, there's some shard trees right there. It's not a huge clump, but it'll do. So there's one shot. There's two shots. With those two shots, I think I've hit all of those shard trees. So now I'm going to back up as the limpets are flying down there. I've got two limpets. I'm going to launch a third one as soon as I get up a little bit higher. I want to make sure that my height is su sufficient. There we go. Just launch the third limpet. And I've got one selected. So you can see the distance on the left side there is decreasing, which means it's actually coming back and bringing me something. And uh, I think it's polonium. I I'm going to look over in a little bit to the screen. Obviously, this is a voiceover. I'm recording this after actually doing it because... I was on the phone while I was doing this, so I uh, I figured, okay, I'll just do a voiceover afterwards. All right, now I've got three limpets flying down. Now, if you want to have multiple limpet controllers, you can do this even faster. So keep in mind that the amount of time that it takes me to do it, uh, which so far we are 17 minutes into the video, so uh, probably about five, six minutes since I've actually gotten to this location, since I've come into the atmosphere. Um, so if you want to use uh, more limpet controllers, um, then certainly you're going to collect all the materials faster. If you run across a large number of trees altogether, whether they're shard trees or brain trees, uh, then having a whole bunch of limpets is going to really help. Now, I've moved back. I think I lost another limpet. And every, anytime I lose a limpet, I check my height and I move up a little bit. So I'm actually at 1.1 kilometers here. Now, the reason it's not exactly one kilometers every time is because the ground is not flat. And so I might be 1.1 kilometers above the ground, but there might be a crater immediately underneath me. But where the limpets are going is a little bit ahead of me as well. And there's no crater there. And so if I was exactly one kilometer from the ground, that could actually still be less than one kilometer for the limpets to pick up the materials. So it's all, you know, just play it by ear. If you lose a limpet, always just get a little higher. And uh, gen chances are the next limpet you launch, you're not going to lose. So I got all three of them, I think, flying back now in the group. And you can see, I shot twice. And I've had limpets going back and forth. I think this is the third time they're bringing materials back up. And let's see if they go back down or if this is it. Uh, yeah, they're going back down. So for a fourth time. So from two shots and three limpets running, there's probably 12 to 14 items for them to pick up. And remember, each time they pick up an item, it's actually three pieces of material that you're going to get from it. Because every item translates into three materials. So I'm going to switch to that. <clears throat> well, first thing I'm going to do is actually craft another, another set of limpets because um, I forgot to bring limpets, so I'm cheating. I'm just creating them then. Uh, but as the video goes on here and we get closer to actually filling up my cargo hold with the raw material, which I think is polonium, but I, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, what does that say? Yeah, polonium. So it is polonium that's being collected. And they're going back one more time. So there's even more material for them to pick up. Now just think of how much time this would take you 
using the little rover, the little dune buggy, where you have to shoot something, hope it doesn't get stuck on top of the tree, and then drive over it to pick it up. That is a horribly slow and efficient process. That's what we used to do. We used to not have a choice. But now that this method has been discovered, this is by far the faster and more preferable method of uh, gathering raw materials. Um, the uh, manufactured materials, now if you go to a high signal source, you can fill up just from a single stop of just sending your limpets out to pick things up, which is great. This hasn't really been affected much. Here we still have to find, you can see now the limpets aren't going anywhere, which means everything that was available has not been cleared out. So now I'm flying again, looking for the next place to collect materials from. And I'm not using any kind of guides or anything on the exact location. I just picked a random spot on the planet. It's just these planets are really good. And using this method, it really does not take long to get material. One shot and then go up. Oh, I think I went a little too hard, too far up. I'm 1.3 kilometers up. Uh, so I'm actually going to go back down a little bit. Make sure my limpets don't, don't have to travel too far. And they've picked up the first batch and are flying back. And again, I know that because looking at having one of the limpets be selected, I can see on the left side of my screen the distance to that limpet, and it's decreasing as the limpet is flying back. So that first limpet is going to drop off the material and then head back down. And the other two are going to follow that along as well. So I'm parked at 1.26 kilometers. Again, that's probably a slight exaggeration. There's probably uh, a little bit of a low ground underneath me that's saying it's actually 1.26, uh, the area where the limpets are picking up, probably a little higher. So here I'm going to check to see just how much um, material I've picked up at this point. And uh, let's see, there you go, polonium. So I'm up to 100 out of 150. And I believe at the beginning of the video, I don't have it in front of me, but I think I had like either 16 or 30. It was right in that range. So I think at this point I've picked up at least 70. I've got 50 more to go, and we're going to finish that next 50 in probably about five to, to maybe seven minutes. It'll be less than 10 minutes until the remainder of that material is picked up. You can see the limpets are flying in. We're up to 106, 109. So that's all three of the limpets, each one bringing in three materials. So we only got about 41 left to go, which probably means after they're done clearing out this spot, um, looks like we have just one limpet flying to pick up the last piece. Two of them are staying near the ship, which means I can start moving and looking for the next spot. And that the limpet just kind of chase me down and fly to me um, and drop off that last shard. Come on, limpet. Where are you? There you go. Now you know where you're going. And I'm just going to keep flying around until I see an area that looks like it's going to be a good target. You know, one or two shards can work. Ideally, there's more than that, but obviously I'm being a little... Oh, yeah, I guess... Yeah, maybe there's three or four there. So this probably isn't going to be enough to completely fill up uh, the other 41 bits of polonium that we need. But uh, we'll make a dent in that, so we'll probably pick up... Well, three limpets are going down, which means there's at least nine material. There's probably more than that. We're probably going to pick up about 20 materials out of this site. And this was just like, what, two, maybe three uh, shard trees. So it's a fairly quick process. The main thing is, you can see, I'm not doing any of the work. I'm just sitting back waiting for the limpets to do their thing. When the limpets aren't moving anywhere, then I fly to the next area to shoot. Shoot it once or twice. Park at about one kilometer height, a little over a kilometer. And then just wait for the limpets to do their job. I could be watching YouTube or Netflix or something else. 
So we had all three limpets drop it off. So that's nine. Two of them are going back down. So that'll be six more. So that's 15 pieces that we picked up from this area. I probably should have just flown a little bit further and found an area that had a few more of these trees all together so that I wouldn't have to uh, pick up just this much, this small an amount. But it is what it is. So we're 25 minutes into the video. Um, and I'm going to, I think uh, at this point we've got, uh, so we had 41, then we've picked up 15, so tw about 26 more to go. Oh, and look at that. There's an area with several shard trees. They're not all clumped together, but I'm going to shoot three rounds off. Make sure that you control the explosion so that you explode them right when they're at ground level. And then let the limpets go to work. Fly up to a little over one kilometer up. And just kick back and relax until they're done. Easy peasy. There's six more. There's three more, so nine more. Polonium now at eighty-eight point seven percent, Commander. Polonium now. And this site definitely has enough. And we're at one thirty-six out of one fifty. So we've got like fourteen left to go, and that's it. And for sure, the last fourteen are going to be done at this site. I don't need to go anywhere else. So being forgetful. Not bringing limpets, being lazy and just making the limpets on the fly. Being lazy and not wanting to fly too much to look for areas. So I was shooting areas that only had one or two trees together. Uh, we're still only 27 minutes into the video. And really the first six or seven minutes was the prep stuff. So what does that leave us? About 20 minutes? So 20 minutes to get back up to 150 polonium. I'd say that's pretty good. And it could be done faster if you have multiple limit controllers. It could certainly be done faster if you first fly in and look for a bigger forest right away. And then you wouldn't have to fly anywhere after that. If you find a decent sized forest, you could literally fill up all your material in one place, in one area, without having to do what I've shown here, which is shoot something, wait till the limpets come back and don't go back out and then uh, find the next spot. So quick and easy. Uh, I know there's multiple videos talking about this on YouTube. I kind of feel like not all of them have the best clear explanation of what to do, nor necessarily where to go. Because this is by no means the only site with polonium. There are other sites that have polonium. Some of them will have very few trees. You may have to fly around for 20, 30 minutes to find enough trees to shoot. Other sites might be just as good as this, but they're 15 light years out. So they're great if you're already flying around and exploring. Not so good if you want to go back to the bubble quickly. So the, the areas that I've shown you, and if you need to just you know go back and pause the video at that place in time, the names are the exact locations um, that I fly to for every one of the materials. And uh, in my experience, these have been the best sites. And if somebody finds a better site that's even closer, great, I'll start using that. But as of right now, late 2024, I think these are the best sites. So we're down to, oh, we just hit it, 150 out of 150. So that's it. We are now full on polonium. Just repeat that process for all the other tier four raw materials. And, uh, this was about 20 minutes. The next, well, in fact, I'm going to show you the map. But this solar system has four of these planets, each planet having a different material. So if you fly here, 
you can literally spend 20 minutes per material. So four materials, it's going to be less than 20 minutes, honestly. It'll probably be more like 15, but let's say it's 20. So 20 times four, so it's an hour 20 you're going to spend here, and you're going to get half of all your raw materials. Um, okay, I'm just being a, uh, uh, a little curious here. I guess I decided that before I fly up, I want to scan this... Uh, geological feature uh and i'm in the wrong mode to do it but hopefully i figure that out come on figure it out getting there there you go all right so do a quick scan get that uh, from her all it's a sulfur dioxide from her all scanned in gives you very little money just a little ocd on my part that i once i saw it i kind of figured i had to stop and scan it just so it's in my uh, database as something I've discovered. Um, and then I'm going to fly out and I'm going to flip on the uh, solar system map so you can see the other three planets are very close in the same solar system to the location of the planet we're currently on. And that'll be it. So come on. So I'll show you the map. I'm going to stop talking. Um, voiceover will be done but i'll show you the map of the solar system and then wrap up the video and uh like i said if you don't know where those locations are if you haven't been here uh just play back the part where i show the bookmarks for all of them at fairly slow speed and that'll tell you exactly where to go for each material type retracting hard point main engine charging Entering Super Cruise. Two, one, engage. Warp engines on. This is HIP 36601. And it's the planets with the yellow bookmark symbols that that have the materials on them. And you can see there's a bunch of different carriers here. There are always, every time I've come here, there have been carriers. That's why I say even if you fly the old-fashioned way without using a carrier, there's always a carrier available here for you to buy lipids from. So I was just uh, being super lazy and uh, crafting limpets instead of just flying up to one of these carriers and buying the limpets and then flying back down. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoy this video. Um, and if you have any questions, leave a comment. But I think it's pretty self-sufficient. It's a great, fast way to get all your raw materials. And um, it really speeds up the gameplay. I mean, this used to take the old-fashioned way. This would be usually either a full day, eight hour, or sometimes a two-day project to go gathering materials. Now you can literally do every single material and fly back to the bubble in about a three hour span of time.